Tell us a bit more, a bit more about that pick and where we are on it. Well, we're waiting for uh, Maka Zerda, who is the more popular of the two candidates, according to nationwide opinion polls, to throw in the towel once and for all. It's been months that he's been playing at Koi. He's the minister president of Bavaria, that's to say the regional governor, and he's risen in the polls because of his hard line approach on the coronavirus and the lockdown measures that were needed. He basically got it all right all along, right from the beginning, saying we need masks, we need social distancing, we need to sh shut down business. Armin Lass it, however, who is also a regional governor of North Rhine-Westphalia, uh, uh, was seen as prevaricating, saying he needs time to think about things, let's have a bit of a lockdown until I'm not going to tell you when, and so on. And that's why Zuda seemed to many of the party faithful as the more popular of the two candidates. Now, there, there are two sister parties within the conservative bloc, the Bavarian CSU and the CDU with the Christian Democratic Union, which is represented in the 15 other non-Bavarian regions. So they're really more weighty and the decision is more important. And Zoda has said he will abide by it and we'll find out very soon if that is indeed the case. It looks like he very likely will. Otherwise, it will be really a fratricidal war that can only harm the conservative bloc's chances in the September election. Already uh, we've seen quite a, a lot of division between that main and sister party uh, the, for the CDU. Uh, quite a lot of wrangling on that, in, in contrast to the way things played out for the Green Party. It is, and I think, you know, it's part of the nature of the Greens, who are, first of all, they always have a male and female leader, that they're structurally built that way in the name of gender parity, and have been since their early days in the 1980s when they campaigned uh, as pacifists against nuclear weapons in Germany and against nuclear energy. They've now entered in government at the federal level, uh, and as, as well in the region. So they're a more plausible governing party for Germans now. We know that they can govern. Uh, but you're exactly right. It, it really stands in stark contrast. And, and one wonders how much that contrast will be in the minds of voters come September when the voters get to choose between the Greens, the Social Democrats, and the Christian Democratic Union or the CDU uh, bloc. Uh, because they've certainly made a show of unity. And as we heard uh, the, the new leader saying, uh, it really kind of taking advantage of her inexperience saying, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly experienced, but I'm about ending the status quo and for renewal, which was a clever way of putting things. She's 40 years old. Uh, she doesn't have any actual governing experience, but she says she's for Germany at the heart of Europe, for prosperity, for freedom and for security. Her party has a hard line on Russia and China, and that's important now. These are really becoming the major policy issues against that famous pipeline coming from Russia, the Nord Stream pipeline. They want an exit from coal. Um, brown coal power earlier than the current government has it. And the thing that really is important here is that they're almost kingmakers now. They're in second place now. We always have coalition governments in Germany. She could be the next German federal chancellor, the second federal chancellor. It looks unlikely as polls are now, but look, it's five months away to the federal elections. A lot of things have changed. They're certainly in, a, in, a, in an important position and uh, she's definitely in a position to decide at least who some of the ministers will be in, in the next government uh, should things go the Greens way. Nick Spicer for now, thanks very much indeed. Our correspondent there coming to us live from Berlin.